Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Today is Saturday, September 9th, and today we are talking about this year's upcoming Tom Lee celebration, its focus and theming for this year, as well as, of course, with the many events that are going along with it here. So, of course, you can find us live on air, online, live streaming through the free and reliable iHeartRadio app, or joining us over on the various social media pages we are up on and posted live on as this episode is premiering these days. Of course, over on the KTSNRadio.com, and specifically the full video that is available on our social media, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and twitch.tv, either under El Paso History, El Paso History TV, El Paso History Radio Show, or Andrew J. Polk. And, of course, on some of our great partner pages, including the great Facebook group Remember in El Paso When. And this is, of course, the place where we say Texas history begins in El Paso. And we do have a history moment at the top of Hour 2 this week from documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk about some of the other interesting topics happening in and around our region. But, again, joining us here in studio right now to talk about for the Tom Lee celebration for 2023, we are joined by Adair Margo, founder and Holly Cobb executive director for the Tom Lee Institute. Thank you both very much much for joining us here today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Absolutely happy to have you all on because as is usually the theming this year, though, again, as it has been, you know, evolving some changes, and that's kind of part of the major theme that you all have this year is about new things, new features, and new ways of interacting. Of course, you know, people may have been familiar in previous years with Tom Lee Month, which has expanded in its own right, and now even the ways that people can interact with it, that's, well, basically the theme for this year of the Tom Lee Trail and the interactive components that you all now have fully up and available along with it, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we have spent two years developing the uh, Tom Lee Trail mobile tour, which is sort of sort of functions like an app. Mm -hmm. But basically, we feature 31 different sites in Texas, and you can download that app on your social media. And also, uh, it gives you the history, the background, uh, exciting stories, uh, videos, um, and wonderful uh images of all these sites along the Tomley Trail. But hmm. the most important thing is is that we have uh, six sites right here in El Paso Absolutely. and we're featured. And so we're hoping to draw uh, tourism to El Paso as a result of this internationally available app. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So we had people may be thinking, okay, Tom Lee Trail, it's a concept that has existed for a while, and we definitely talked about this the last time we had you all on the program, as that was in development and something that was very excited about, and so that now then serves as the theme for this year as well, the Tom Lee Trail. So when it comes to the concepts, the the way that this was built out, what are some of the things, I mean, of course, they're mentioning about some historic sites, and anyone who's even vaguely familiar of Tom Lee, of which we will be explaining over the course of this couple hours, would know that he often featured interesting sites, events, um, locations in and around, of course, our area and around the state and the country, the world even. So when it comes to how the Tom Lee Trail came about, what do you tell people that if they're wondering about this or have never even heard about it before? Uh, it's, it's, it's a concept that's developed since 2007, in fact, uh, oh, mm -hmm. even before that. Uh, when I studied in Italy, I traveled what was called the Piero della Francesca Trail. Mm. And I went to outside of Florence. I went to Monterchi to see one pregnant Madonna, to Arezzo to see the legend of the True <laughs> Cross, mm -hmm. and then to Piero's hometown on the border of, on the border of Tuscany and, and Umbria uh, to see the risen Christ. So, Traveling trails to see art was something that really was very meaningful to me. And then okay. in 2007, after I became, became more visible with Tom Lee, I received a call from a man teaching in France, an Italian art historian, asking me if Tom Lee were influenced by that artist, Piero della Francesca. I'd done his oral history. Mm -hmm. Tom Lee had told me that uh, he, w he kind of teared up when he talked about seeing Piero's work and touching it with mm -hmm. his hand. Uh, he was a classicist, as Tom Lee was, and this art historian saw uh, something of Piero's nobility of figures in our Paso the North Mural in El Paso. So the mm. concept came from that, and I began asking myself, if you travel the Tom Lee Trail, what would you find? What would it connect, and what would mm. you find out about it? And it was so interesting about regional history uh, and the 
he he did pieces all over the state. Holly said sure. she said thirteen sites. So that it, we put it on paper, and then uh, Holly and her brother. I mean, it's just a brilliant. Uh, I, I'm so thrilled about this uh, this uh, mobile website because it's so it's just so fascinating. You learn about all different aspects of a community. But Tom Lee's art, classic art, is mm. what kind of draws you in to learn about the first recorded surgical operation in North America, oh, sure. for instance, in Galveston, which is what was the first medical school in Texas. Uh, so you learn about places uh, through Tom Lee's art. His art's never about itself. It's always about history or the mm -hmm. environment or something beyond itself. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, and, and so you can go to these different sites uh, virtually on our mobile tour, or you can actually go there and see it for yourself and and experience the uh, mobile tour educating you about the site and so forth. Absolutely. So we've yeah. been popping up some of the artwork that comes along with it and, of course, the many influences that go into this work. So how does that, when that theming comes through it, how does that end up being the, the way it'll work for, for this year, for the Tom Lee celebration for 2023, which will be going on, I mean, some of these events all the way through uh, April of next year, right? Right. Yeah, it, Essentially, every event is associated with a site along the Tom Lee Trail this year, which mm. isn't always the case. So, for example, last year we did an event at the LBJ Library, which is not a site along the sure. Tom Lee Trail, but it made sense to do it for other reasons. But this year, every site is featured on the mobile tour. And so, for example, we have uh, UTEP, and we have actually four different events going on at UTEP this year. Mm. And the first launch of the Tom Lee celebration this year will take place at UTEP and the, it'll be a, a walking tour and it'll feature Tom Lee's art at UTEP which is embedded many different places mm. but also some of his friends so we call it the Tom Lee and friends walking tour and then okay. at the end of that we'll have a wonderful reception where um, President Heather Wilson of uh, UTEP will be announcing a marvelous gift that uh, Tom Lee's granddaughter is giving to the university. Excellent. So mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that people can be both, you know, see, be a part of, or experience kind of wherever they are this right. year, particularly. Yeah. And right. we really want, we'd love people to travel with us too. For instance, sure. the, the Bush Library in, in Dallas will be open after hours hosting a reception uh, for uh, the Tom, Tom Lee guess mm -hmm. uh, and there is his painting rio Grande. unfortunately uh the original is in um the museum of art it will not be on view i think mm -hmm. it's in storage but the uh the the bush library will have a special reception to let us see how the the that painting uh looked in the oval office so we'll get to yeah. hear about how that painting oh, okay. ended up and uh, could... at the white house and the oval office yeah and you 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 can see the reproduction of the Oval Office with the Rio Grande during that reception mm. and so forth. So it'll be a great event. But we have we have events uh, in Austin as well as Dallas, right. Hebronville as well as Seymour, um, all kind you know all kinds of different places. And you'll see it Absolutely. on our brochures and so forth. And as well. I, I wanted to just mention because I don't. Sometimes we don't think about how significant it is. Mm -hmm. This is the first heritage trail in the state of Texas in a dozen years. Oh, it is okay. the only trail named for an artist. Uh, it was presented at NATO at the invitation of Kay Bailey Hutchison when she was ambassador there. Mm -hmm. We presented on the Tomley Trail. Italians presented on the Piero della Francesca mm -hmm. Trail. Uh, Holly was great about going around talking to all the ambassadors and we don't think about, we want to go to Europe, but we don't, sometimes we don't think about Europeans wanting to come here and what they would like to learn about. Sure. And what they'd like to learn about is these themes that are, are rooted in Texas, but connect us to Europe because Tom Lee went back to the origins mm -hmm. of horses and how they train them in Mexico. And all these themes connect us to the old world. Uh, but it's it, it was wonderful. This man from Slovenia, Holly, when it's enlivening this little museum down in Hebronville, the jailhouse museum. But when Holly asked him where he'd like to visit, of course, everybody wanted to come to El Paso. But he also said he wanted to go to Hebronville. He hmm. was fascinated by Hebronville. So Hebronville was thrilled to 
realize that a European ambassador wants to come visit them. Absolutely. I mean, I've run into people on different trail, the Mission Trail in El Paso, coming from Europe and coming to see around and see some of our sites. So it makes sense that it would be a way to connect it and have people come and visit that in other ways here. So again, all the information going to be primarily through the, again, the Tom Lee app this year or mobile website, right? Uh, right. Yeah. The, all the information is on our uh, on our mobile tour. And basically, you can download it on social media. Very easy to download and it's a very easy to navigate and people who we've tested it out so far it's going to actually be launched in a few weeks here officially but okay. if you have the QR code you can access uh, the mobile tour right now. Excellent and yeah. we will have that posted up on our social media alongside as this video does end up premiering as long as as well as it is then airing on air so if you want to go over to our social media of course find them with Tom Lee Institute Tom Lee Celebration for 2023 but over on our social media again the Facebook pages again El Paso History El Paso History Radio Show YouTube El Paso History TV or uh, Andrew J. Polk also on Facebook the Twitter at old Andrew J. Polk there as well, or Twitch as well. We'll have that posted up in all those places we can, as well as that QR code here. So already due for that first break of this hour right now. Again, that's Holly Cobb, Executive Director, along with Adair Margo, founder of the Tom Lee Institute. Find out everything about them and some of these upcoming events, at least in part. But again, more coming live a little bit later this month, so stay tuned there as well. TomLee.com, or just search up the Tom Lee Institute on your uh, search engine of choice here. So got to take that first break right now. They're sticking around with us, and you stay tuned. Tune for more on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in what is Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, 
where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Of course, we are the El Paso History Radio Show over on Facebook, where you can go and see our weekly promo announcements of each and every upcoming episode, along with some of these recorded episodes as well. And particularly over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. These recorded episodes, they can always go back and review on our previous great topics, as well as the entire series of El Paso Gold DVDs. DVDs from Capstone Productions covering more than the last couple of decades of documentary filmmaking and production here in town, including slightly more recent, the 20 ABC7 TV series segments from El Paso History TV with Bernie Sargent largely in front of the camera. I was behind on, on a lot of it talking about a lot of those imp- in- important but foundational subjects of history, kind of introducing it for the next generation. All of that completely uploaded for free for viewing at your leisure. And also a reminder to support our advertisers, Pepe's Restaurant in New Mexico, in Kenya Tio, rather, right before you hit New Mexico. The Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, that is, is open for in-house dining at 6761 Donovan Drive with all the traffic hassles. One of the better ways to get there these days is either to head right up Donovan, or if you can get right across, if you're coming particularly from the east side, headed straight over Trans Mountain, then down Talbot, you can get there pretty easily as long as you avoid that last stretch of I-10 where the construction is going on. But in any case, if you want to give them a call, find out their hours, or even make your order to place and have it for events, as I've definitely done in the past, give them a call at 915-877-2152. That's 915-877-2152. It is, of course, home of the great old Griggs recipes. New food, same recipes, but definitely also home of the Juan and Only Margarita. Again, 6761 Donovan Drive. But again, joining us here in studio right now, we do have Adair Margo, founder, and Holly Cobb, the executive director for the Tom Lee Institute, talking this year as we are, of course, discussing the Tom Lee celebration, which those who may have uh, not heard it entirely but familiar with it years past is the continued evolution of the previously just constrained to a month of Tom Lee month and now going all the way through April these days. And again, the way that this is being put together this year, particularly with the Tom Lee Trail and uh, very specifically that uh, Tom Lee Trail app that is going to be available for download, we do have that QR code that uh, Holly did mention a little bit earlier. We're going to keep that on screen here for just a minute, but don't worry if you missed the chance to uh, pull out your phone for those of you also on social media, but anyone also listening to us on Terrestrial Radio, we will have this fully posted up over on our social media. So even if you're out driving right now, no, don't touch your phone and try to do anything with it right now. It'll be up there available for you all there as well. So those are some of the things going on. But as is always the case, there's always someone being introduced to subjects in history, someone who may not have been fully aware, fully paying attention or new to the area, among other things, or becoming of age where they are becoming aware of these things. So particularly when it comes to Tom Lee and the lens through which he is used to explore history, the trail and all of this, why Tom Lee? Why do it this way? Why, you know, have this celebration this month and uh, this app put together this way, Adair? Well, uh, the whole concept of the Tom Lee uh, celebration came about for his centennial. He was a native El Pasoan. Mm. Uh, he was born here. He died here. 
uh, his nourishment came from this place. Although he went away to the Art Institute of Chicago mm. to be trained uh, as a muralist, the finest muralist of the New Deal period, our pass of the North mural. Mm. People have seen that mural, have said it is the finest of the period about our history. Uh, but he, he, he accomplished so much with his life. It was mm. Robert Caro who said to me at a, a Texas book festival when I had gone, for a book we'd done only on his World War II work. He was mm, a World mm. War II artist correspondent right. for four years, the most noted, doing full spreads in Life magazine. Uh, and it was Robert Caro who said to me when he met me, he said, you knew Tom Lee? And I said, well, you know, my great-granddad baptized him. I, mm. got to do his, I got to do his oral history, and that's when I did his oral history back in 1993, became a book in 1995, I, I had no clue, really, what he had accomplished with his life. And he was such a quiet, modest man, never integrated into curricula. But Robert Caro said to me, he, when he's, uh, he said, Tom Lee was an unsung genius of our time hmm. who made it purely on the quality of his work. Uh, best-selling novelist, illustrated mm -hmm. his books on the bestseller list with Hemingway and Steinbeck history of the king ranch i mean he did so much a real renaissance man he was so tied to this area mm. uh it's it's if we don't honor him it's that like this italian renaissance artist said he said you art art historian he said i'm not saying everybody should paint classically but like tom lee but what you should cherish having someone like that from your hometown and his themes are timeless and of mm. of, of constant interest uh his his novels you know they they have things about well, his novels have you know the jewish population in it it has the buffalo soldiers mm. it's, you learn so much about our history but through stories that are so accessible this app will be used in classrooms too you know it's just oh, a very excellent. engaging uh engaging way to explore our history Last year, we focused completely on China, right? Mm -hmm. Because when he he was uh, during World War II for life, he spent a lot of time in China. Did portraits of Madame and General Lisimo Chiang Kai Shek. Mm -hmm. So we now my husband and I have established this Tom Lee Fellowship at UTEP because mm -hmm. it, it, he's never been taught on the UTEP campus. Really. But they ha have his work, yeah, and they have uh -huh. letters, and they have his father's letters. So there are these resources that we have never explored, and it's really taking off, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. Last year was just awesome, and it, it, we used to give the fellowship for students. Now we've opened it up to professors, mm, and okay. UT Austin is one of the great repositories of his work at the Harry Ransom Humanities Research Center. So we want UTEP students with their professors going to the Harry Ranson Center, going mm, up to okay. Washington, D.C., to Fort Belvoir, Virginia, the U.S. Army Center for Military History. That's a huge repository of his World War II work. So he not only connects us to our own community, but he connects us to the rest of the state, which is what this Tom Lee Trail is about, and right. to the rest of the, uh, of the world, really. You feel prepared to go there after knowing about Tom Lee's experiences there. Yeah, and again, the full map that is of the Tom Lee Trail, like we have up on screen there again, connecting all across the state, all across our region, down into New Mexico and Old Mexico as well. Many of the different spots and places that he was either again, present in or documenting in his own right and through his artistic lens. And I guess that's that's really the purpose then of it, at least the way I take it as that through Tom Lee looking and exploring all these different subjects, either the way that he was present or exploring them for them, or are the you know, things that he may not have been uh, totally present for, like you mentioned, the uh, Cabeza de Vaca, the first documented surgery or surgical -like type procedure, even if it would be kind of primitive by modern standards, happening in North America. Right. And that came about because Tom Lee, people knew of his work, and the Surgical Society, for their 50th anniversary, asked Tom Lee to do a commemorative painting for them. He also designed their logo. He designed the logo for the University of Texas Press. He designed mm -hmm. the logo for Texas A&M Press. I mean, he is embedded all around the state, but he worked from here. One of the things that, uh, that you mentioned, Andrew, was uh, looking at things through the lens of Tom Lee. Mm -hmm. And it's he wasn't just an extraordinary artist and writer, but 
It was the perspective that he had that was very mm. profound, very nourishing, and really um, edified you as a person, makes you a better person and have more insight into life and, <clears throat> and the world. And so, so it's, it's that lens is a, is a key, uh, I think, insight that you, you've brought out, Andrew. He I had mean, a reverence. Mm-hmm. He had a reverence for life. Mm-hmm. No, certainly. I mean, it's, having heard some of those oral history and other recordings of him towards uh, the end of his life talking about, I mean, even the way he ended up choosing his place to live, uh, being on the east side of the mountain, the sunrise side of the mountain, as he referred to, and that's why uh, Tom Lee Park is there, among other things. So all, and where his art is already in display in our community that people may drive by every day, and if they had no, have to take the time to stop and look at it and understand, they may think, well, that looks pretty, but maybe not fully understanding the full significance significance of it. So that again, that is the focus, that is the purpose, and that is the reason to have this celebration, this app, and all of these things going on, at least in part anyway, I'm sure. Yes, absolutely. Tom Lee really is embedded in so many different places and locations, like at the International Museum. Nope, There's sure. a lentil that he did uh, right. there of uh, basically three different kinds of hats that celebrate the different nationalities mm-hmm. of this region, and we're doing an event there as well, and we've invited uh, the director of uh, is Leda del Sur Pueblo to talk about Native American headdresses and the dancers will be there and so forth. So uh, you wouldn't believe all the different places that you can discover Tom Lee in this particular uh, region, for sure. I'd like to point out too, Andrew, I mean, mm. Ho- Holly is an educator at heart. She has, uh, she has created like 13 curricula that are mm. happening in school districts in El Paso, I think all five school districts, mm-hmm. and around the state. So really, this is something that's sort of going on all the time in classrooms and for people to learn tours during the year. But the celebration's a way to make it visible kind of for everybody else to participate. Um, but it's it's helping helping us understand the rich place we live in. And we yeah. always talk about that. We're so we're so layered in our history mm. and it's hard to get at it but it's it's uh we're making a real difference uh through the Tom Lee Institute and these curricula uh, she's been training uh teachers teachers mm-hmm. yeah yeah we we did it um basically an in service training for 50 oh, uh, fine okay. arts teachers um just uh, a few months ago and on portraiture cuz Tom Lee was an outstanding portraitist and People don't really always think of him that way. They yeah. always think he's a la- landscape artist, but he he was a phenomenal portrait um, artist. And so we, we did a, a training on that. And then all, all of our curricula, so for example, if you go to the Pass of the North mural and you look mm-hmm. up the mobile tour, which they'll also have at the federal courthouse, the, the um, QR code, and you can scan ah, it. Of course. And... Uh, you you can also access our Who Passed Through Here curricula, which deals with the um, Pass of the North Mural. So Absolutely. So that QR code, again, we'll put on screen for one more minute here. But again, it'll be av- available alongside where we also have this episode posted as we are airing it this week. So again, that's uh, Holly Cobb, Executive Director, and of course, joining us here in studio as well, Adair Margo, founder for the Tom Lee Institute. Again, all the things going on for the Tom Lee Celebration 2023, your best resource on all of that will be TomLee.com. That's T O M L E A. Dot com And they've got the links to the Tom Lee Trail under more travel, and you can find that information, uh, the download links and all of that going live later on. But this QR code will get you the access to it right now, so be able to sure to. Again, if you're not able to get to it right now, if you are over again on our very different uh, non-video options of uh, listening to this show, it'll be up and available there as well, along with the recording as well. So, again, got to take that next break right now. Coming out of this break, talking a lot more about some of the particular events going on during this Tom Lee celebration period of time so stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show after this break here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. 
Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in what is Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in what is Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on youtube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in what is Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Of course, do want to take a moment to mention some of our other great partners in promoting different aspects of El Paso's history, including the great group over at Celebration of Our Mountains. You can, of course, find them at celebrationofourmountains.org, or if that's a little bit too long of a name to type in accurately, just search that on your search engine of choice because they have quite a lot of different things, both noted as well as on their calendar and many other 
upcoming events, including very specifically out towards the end of every month. The last Thursday of every month is when they have their recurring social and gathering, and both in terms of branching out and return to form for them, where they have that at Artovino's Desert Crossing on Sunland Park, New Mexico. So the celebration of our mountains monthly social coming up for September on the 28th of this month, going from 6 to 8 p.m. You can go and be a part of the organization, find out what they got coming up, or even be able to lead a tour yourself here. But again, for all of their information, including their upcoming events, celebrationofourmountains.org. That's celebrationofourmountains.org. And also time to mention some of our great sponsors and supporters of the program. Economy Wholesale Grocers with two locations in El Paso at 1500 East Paisano on 411 North Zaragoza. Economy Wholesale Grocers, Economy Cash and Carry. Find them online at economywholesalegrocers.com. That's economy wholesalegrocers.com and again part of El Paso history in their own right economy wholesale grocers economy cash and carry proud sponsors of the El Paso history radio show but again joining us here in studio right now we do of course have Adara Margo founder and Holly Cobb executive director for the Tom Lee Institute as we are talking about for the Tom Lee celebration this year and very specifically how the Tom Lee trail the major theming and the way that it is going to be displayed and even the interactivity that comes along with it specifically through that app that they have fully have developed and on available for people to, particularly if you're looking over on our websites and on our social, but also available on their website at TomLee.org. That's T-O-M-L-E-A dot, sorry, com, in this case, dot com. And they do have that QR code available. But the focus on then the many events going on surrounding this, we've been talking a lot about the way that will kind of work this year, the kind of focus on the app and the online experiences that both help educate anyone wherever they are, but also inform the localities that are a part of this. And so there's a lot of events that you're all going to be having this year. I mean, we've set a lot of groundwork, I feel like, already this program, but there's still a ton of things that are going to be happening that people can go and be directly, physically a part of. Right, Andrew. We have all kinds of very robust events. They're never Mm -hmm. just, you know, a boring lecture, but they're always some kind of an exciting topic with a great presenter. Mm -hmm. In this case, another event that we have is uh, New Deal, New Friendship, as Adair mentioned, with Dr. Miguel Juarez, Mm -hmm. uh, and he's talking about Jose Acevas, um, who was uh, an artist in his own right here in El Paso. Mm -hmm. He and Tom uh, became friends and colleagues over the New Deal mural, and, and he had competed for the mural, but of course Tom won it. And so... Uh, Miguel is going to be illuminating that friendship and Tom's Tom's influence mm, on mm. him, and uh, it's going to be uh, feature ballet folklorico dancers, a mm, children's mm. troupe which we just love, and also a wonderful um, uh, appetizer repast uh, as well. So this will all be at the Centennial Museum, uh, and. We're very excited about it. That'll be October fifth on uh, Thursday. Most of our events. Uh, occur usually on a Thursday around oh. 5.30 to sort of get you over the hump to Friday. Gotcha. And okay. they're usually right after work or right after you've gotten the kids home or whatever it happens to be. But um, we really are looking forward to that event as well as uh, a wonderful event in uh, called the Evolution of the Sagittectomy. And Adair, you want to talk about that? You d- You mentioned it already at the Texas Tech uh, School of Medicine. Yeah, it's a heck of a phrase there yeah, as well. I know. It's tough. <laughs> I, I looking at it, I have it written in front of me, and I, that's not the pronunciation I would have come out with having never heard that one said out loud before. Yeah, it's... The sagittectomy. Yeah, I guess... Sagittectomy. Well, yeah. sag- Sagittarius is an uh, arrow, right? Oh, it's, sure. it's an arrow, so it's taking uh, an arrow okay. out, of, out of an Indian's chest in 1535. And so that's the one that we have that depiction yeah, of. We mentioned we mentioned that. And the interesting mm-hmm. thing about the trail is it does connect El Paso to the rest of the state. Sure. Uh, the painting for the uh, Cabeza de Vaca taking an arrow out of an Indian's chest is in Galveston, as we mentioned. But Ron Gum, who was a plastic surgeon here in El Paso, his wife bought the drawing when I began um, showing Tom Lee's ah, art okay. when I, when I had an art gallery. And when uh, they downsized, uh, she asked where she should give it. And I said, you know, Marianne, why don't you give it to the med school? So that's where it Mm -hmm. is. That's Mm -hmm. where it is now, which puts um, the Paul uh, Foster uh, Medical School. Actually, it's housed in the Woody Hunt uh, Dental School. Uh, They host a lot of receptions in that beautiful building. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
uh, and then Dr. Alan Tyrock, if you talk be. about the event. It, mm-hmm. That's what's so, it gets doctors. I mean, doctors are talking about a work of art because it's part of their history. Right. Uh, Vesa de Vaca and Alan Tyrock, who is the uh, head of surgery there at uh, Texas Tech, uh, he's, he's, he's spoken to a lot of students over the years uh, from um, Jefferson, from the Silva Magnet Oh, of School. course, yeah. And he'll be speaking. I don't have right. the yeah. description yeah. in front of me, but you do. Yeah, he, he's, he will be speaking. We'll be giving two different tours, one of the record, first recorded surgical operation, then another one. It's in the nursing school, which are reproductions of the giants from the past of the North Mural. Mm, so there'll mm. be it'll be a oh, lot sure. going on during this event. Plus, we'll have a, again a wonderful uh, reception and repast uh, that will also be part of the community building that we like to do during Tom Lee's celebration. Andrew, that's something that's interesting. The, the, the nursing school, the founding dean was Jean Novotny, and her mm. husband took an Ole class from me at UTEP on, on Tom Lee. Oh, okay. And he was so fascinated that we had someone like that in our community. He told his wife, and she learned about the Tom Lee Trail. This was years ago, and she goes, well, we want to be on the Tom Lee Trail. <laughs> so they decided mm-hmm. to, uh, for their injury way, which is now named after Tyler Francis, uh, oh, uh, yes. Rick Francis, who's a big, he and Ginger are big collectors of Tom Lee's art, but they reproduce. It's very, very attractive the way these images, the giants of our past, because mm. they're in the nursing school. They're creating giants of our future uh, through, med- through medicine. Interesting. I didn't know that was not over there. Been over there through Texas Tech, particularly the dental school, a couple of times here because there's fascinating work going on there. But uh, the connection and the influence in these things is very interesting in its own right. So there's, again, a lot more events going on. We mentioned a couple of them here, but again, just a reminder that the span of these goes all the way through April of next year because that's the scope we talk about with Tom Lee Celebration this year. And we had mentioned a couple of them, but just in case we didn't mention it enough here, what's going on, of course, over at uh, UTEP as well, there's at least a couple of events, right, happening there? Yeah, yeah there are, we have the, the walking tour of Tom Lee and Friends, but we also have... Uh, just, there are two Tom Lee fellow professors, mm. both of them from the music department. They're musicians in their own right. Mm. And one of them has, uh, Dr. Dominic Dusa, has uh, written a, a whole original uh, piece on three Tom, of Tom Lee's works of art. And he'll be performing those with a trio at UTEP in the geology uh, library or geology reading room Mm -hmm. and so it's going to be all about music and Tom Lee's art and then his wife who's also uh, an accomplished pianist and professor of music at UTEP will be doing another event where she's going to talk about Tom Lee through the ages and basically has paired his music or his art with music of Mm -hmm. particular decades that are that's typical of a particular decade So it'd be the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Ah, And then she's paired that with Tom Lee's art. So it's a very multidimensional experience. And that'll be at the History Museum. And so uh, that'll be a live performance also. And Jose Mario Sanchez will be uh, singing the music. And then um, Nagyali Dusa will be performing on piano. So that should be just a, a fantastic event. And this, you know, she takes her classes. She is so energetic and excited mm-hmm. about uh, about the Tom Lee Fellowship. But she takes her students down to the Museum of Art and mm. and uh, to experience Tom Lee's art. So that's become part of the curricula for someone who's never been taught. Uh, now, you know, people are exposing uh, all kinds of students, not just art students, uh, to his work. Certainly, and I feel like that has oftentimes been a, yeah, I don't know if stigma is the right phrase for it, but a separation, a, a siloing, if you will, of between, you know, art history and general history. Because, I mean, sure, you get those certain periods and there were certain influences. I mean, there's, uh, I don't want to say that you can only see so many Madonnas before you feel like you've seen them all, but there's often a separation. But even then, each era of history, the way that the art was produced through it, is a lens through which, I mean, that's how they viewed the world at that point in time. So by separating these, again, not necessarily by rote, but very much by practice, it feels like it often feels like it's doing a disservice by not using that, even if it's a, okay, you can look at so many religious images, but the way that they were depicted, at very least through their own eras and generations, can be instructive in the history of those eras themselves. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And that's uh, what uh, Dr. Deuce is doing with her uh, through the ages, pairing mm -hmm. art and history and music all together to give the students a real um, multi-dimensional lens. And they're probably going to remember it a lot better, too, you know, with all of that that uh, input. So absolutely a little yeah. bit more uh, concentrated and again diverse in its own way there mm -hmm. so again uh, that's holly cobb executive director for the tom lee institute as well as going joining us here in studio uh, adair margo founder of the same again details on all of the things going on and all of these events we're talking about here find them over on the again tom lee institute website tom lee.com so t-o-m-l-e-a Dot com and specifically when we're talking about things including the celebration for this year make sure to check out all those links and they do have the download link for that app for the tom lee trail that will be both the focus and so of course the way that they are having many of these events happen this year but gotta take that next break right now coming out of this break talking more about the events and the things going on during this celebration period so stay tuned for more on the el paso history radio show here on news radio 690 ktsm you are listening to the el paso history radio show streaming on facebook where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. The old Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Of course, I'll continue our discussion about the uh, Tom Lee Institute and the Tom Lee Celebration for this year, but I want to take another second to mention some of our other great partners and talking about different aspects of El Paso's history in their own right, and of course, previous guests on the show. Uh, Rick Kern, along with his music podcast, Talk and Rock Radio. Find them online, talkandrockradio.com. Talk about 
about many of the different kinds of remembrances of the, well, particularly the golden age of rock and roll coming through our town in terms of both performers, performances, performance venues, uh, different acts and concerts that have happened there, all those remembrances, including some of his most recent ones, Stax Records, the heart and soul of rock and roll with Steve Cropper and Terry Manning and Warren Hamm, his journey with the stars, a whole lot of things there in production for 2023 over there at talkandrockradio.com. That's talk and rockradio. Dot com. But again, joining us here in studio right now, we do have Adara Margo, founder and Holly Cobb, executive director with the, the Tom Lee Institute. Again, as we're talking about this year for the Tom Lee celebration, being the focus and the lens through which they're doing it this year with the Tom Lee Trail, a feature in its own right, but is also available as that app that can be downloaded. Again, we've got that uh, QR code that should be posted alongside this episode over on our social media, or you can find it within this. Or, of course, over on their website, TomLee.com. That's T O M. LEA.com, where you can find that information. And so continuing on talking about the many events going on during this, because it's not just announcement of an app and that you can go and figure out yourself here, which I mean, of course you can, but the events that come along with this are again, the, well, the way and the focus that you all do for the Tom Lee celebration going on all the way through April of next year. So we've been mentioning a few of the things going on, and there's actually a couple more, particularly in terms of getting in and around the area. You've got a couple of a weekend experiences the way you're putting them. Right, yeah. One of the thing that's, things that's interesting about Tom Lee is that he takes you to the smaller, more out-of-the-way uh, towns uh, in, in Texas in particular. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we've got two people who are on the Tom Lee Trail one is in Seymour, featuring the Comanche's mural, mm-hmm. and one is in in Hebronville, which is uh, featuring the Randado Ranch, El Rancho Randado, which Tom Lee was Tom Lee, the subject of Tom Lee's first illustrated book. Mm-hmm. And so, both of those places are not places that you would pass through on your way to Dallas, Houston, or Austin. You no. have to make an effort to get there. But the people have in both of those towns are pulling out all the stops to give you a whole day and evening experience Mm -hmm. around not only Tom Lee, but also the other things they have to offer related to ranching, Native Americans, and so forth. And we're calling those weekend experiences so that Mm -hmm. you could go to Hebronville and you can uh, have a tour of the ranch, uh, Rancho Randado, which is not available normally. Oh, and then okay. also they have all kinds of other events and food, as well as an uh, a exhibit at the old jail museum there. And so you could take and spend the whole day and spend the night and have a, a totally unique experience that you could not have otherwise. And the same is true um, in Seymour with the Comanche's mural, which was right. at the post office there. And so that's at a post office, right? Okay. Yeah, and uh, so and then uh, they they're going to have a whole heritage trade show with how you how you make uh, belts and boots and that sort of thing and food yeah, as well okay. as a, a commemoration of the Comanche's mural and Tom Lee's um, uh, painting of it. And so uh, both places are really very unique, and so. I don't know, Adair, if you want to illuminate the Comanche's mural a little bit. It's pretty, uh, one of his very interesting WPA murals. Uh, right. Of course, Tom was, I did his oral history, and sure. he, he talked about even as a little boy when he went to the Grand Canyon, he was mainly interested in the Hopi House. Uh, even okay. more than the than the Grand Canyon, he was always interested in, in indigenous cultures. And when he lived mm. up in Santa Fe, he and his first wife, he'd go to, you know, ceremonies. And oh, okay. uh, but it, it is interesting. He didn't choose the cowboy for whom Seymour was named. Uh, that was the heart uh-huh, of the okay. uh, of the, the Comanches. Uh, and here in El Paso, he focused on the Apaches. Oh, sure. So it's specific Indians with specific garb. And, of course, the uh, Comanches became, became such great warriors right. uh, on, on horseback. Um, so Seymour's, a, I mean, I never knew Seymour. It's close to um, Wichita Falls. In fact, when mm-hmm. we had the Tom Lee Trail uh, recognize Craig Estes, who at the time was a representative, a senator from Wichita Falls was one of our sponsors with Jose Rodriguez here, uh-huh, in, right. here in El Paso, a mm-hmm. Republican. It's a bipartisan trail. Everybody mm-hmm. loves their culture. 
we don't fight over it. And uh, so we had uh, Senator Rodriguez and Craig Estes uh, be our sponsors in 2017. It's a wonderful community, and you go to a hotel down there now, and their placemats are the Tomley Trail. They're so excited, oh, really? you know, to be a part of it. Wow. Uh, everybody's r- really excited to be part of a bigger whole and have people. And also, uh, we have a video on the Tomley website of Luciano Cellis, who was the Italian art historian who taught in France, and he traveled to Seymour. Really? And when he spoke on this video, uh, he he said it was, I got to ride a horse. (laughs) He got to ride a horse. He got to stay on a ranch and ride a horse in Seymour. And he just shook his head and he says, great experience. So we want lots of people to have that great experience uh, from abroad and from our own neighboring towns. Just get out and experience life, experience uh, the trail. Uh, that's, that's what we want. Absolutely. So talk a little bit about the mural that is there. I mean, it's labeled Comanches, and it shows a pretty dynamic scene of uh, both, you know, trotting, cantering, and uh, even a jumping uh, type of horses and be, what would be fairly recognizable, I think, to the average person, even of their, again, specifics towards, you know, the Comanches of, you know, horseback lances and, uh, you know, the kind of leather-bound shields. But, and again, you said that it was part of a, a WPA project specifically, so part of those New Deal artworks that he did? It was. It was a New Deal. He did seven uh, New Deal uh, murals. His first one in Washington, D.C., mm-hmm. but this was the last one uh, for the New Deal that, uh, that Tom did for the Seymour Post Office. And it is interesting. You know, he wrote a book called The Hands of Cantu about horses and mm-hmm. how, you know, horses, of course, came through here with Don Juan de Oñate right. in 1598 and cattle. And, uh, but he was very interested in how they bred horses and also how the Indians got them. Because the Spaniards, uh, you know, they, they kind of knew if the Indians were going to get the horses, they'd defeat them. And they did get the horses, and they did become great mounted warriors. So mm-hmm. it's interesting. In, in his Pass of the North mural, you see an Appaloosa or different kinds of horses, uh, different kinds okay. of riding. And there you see, of course, the Spaniard. They were all riding for different purposes. But the Indians are the ones who uh, really were like a man and a horse combined, like a centaur. I mean, they just rode them without the saddles or bridles or spurs. Absolutely. So, again, that'll be part of what's coming up as the again, continuation of Tom Lee's celebration goes much past the month, of course, the way they're doing it this year. So talking about some of those out-of-town experiences. But for the details on all of this, be sure to go and visit, of course, the Tom Lee Institute on their website, TomLee.com. That's T-O-M-L-E-A dot com for all those details. And, again, the details on the app, the uh, Tom Lee Celebrations focus this year for the Tom Lee Trail and where you can find out and all the events, the details, how you can participate in all those ways this year. So again, uh, that's Adara Margo, again, the founder for the Tom Lee Institute, and again, Holly Cobb also joining us here in studio, executive director of the same, talking a whole lot more about that, but got to take that next break right now and coming back after the top of the hour news, so stay tuned for a whole lot more in the second hour of the show on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free Many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. You can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA-TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 
and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free Many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. You can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history, Remember in El Paso When, on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. 
Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Of course, continuing on with our discussion about Tom Lee celebration and the many events and focuses of it this year with our guests from the Tom Lee Institute. But starting off hour two of this program, as we usually do with a history moment from documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk. <music> If you've been to the Plaza Classic Film Festival at the Plaza Theater, you've heard the rarest of rarities, the music of one of the few theater organs in its original theater home. The Weiler Mighty Wurlitzer Pipe Organ, as it's now called, is one of six organs of its kind. Shipped from the Wurlitzer factory in North Tonawanda, New York, in July 1930, it debuted when the Plaza Theater opened in September 1930. The organ came with a rare Moorish-style key desk, painted a gold finish, three manuals, a pedal board, 15 ranks, 1,071 pipes, six tuned percussion instruments, a large electro-pneumatic relay, and a 10-horsepower turbine. In 1972, the mighty Wurlitzer was sold to an airline pilot in Dallas. In the 1990s, as the Community Foundation efforts to restore and reopen the theater gained momentum, the Foundation purchased and partially restored the organ. It was installed in the Sunland Park Mall food court, where volunteers played it daily beginning in May 1998. It remained there until the early 2000s, when it was restored and expanded by artisans in Arizona. The Plaza Theater reopened on March 17, 2006. The organ, renamed for its benefactors, broadcaster Carl O. Weiler and his wife Glenn, returned to the Plaza Theater with a concert by Walt Stroney on November 3rd of that year. Today the organ is played by volunteer organists before movies shown in the Plaza Theater Film Festival, much like it was used when the theater first opened in 1930. It's accompanying the silent movie, is used occasionally by the El Paso Symphony Orchestra, and is often featured on free public tours of the theater. The organ has been expanded several times, most recently in 2020, and now features 27 ranks, 1,890 pipes, which range in size from 16 feet to the size of a pencil, and a 15-horsepower turbine. I'm Jackson Polk with this History Moment for the El Paso History Radio Show. And again, thanks to that. And of course, I'm also mentioning our great partners in El Paso history work. Barbara Given Bainey, operator of the great Facebook group called Remember in El Paso When. You can go there for archive pictures galore. More than 34,000 members as of last check. But please remember the administrators do work very hard in researching photos with our history attached to it. So anyone sharing or using those photos do ask that credit be given to their site and finding the information behind it as well. So again, a lot of credit to be given to Chief Admin Owner and Historian Barbara Given Bainey, affectionately known as BGB, along with admins Rick Duncan, Rick Nahara, Margaret D. Smith, Jim Gerber, and Dan Graves, along with moderators Ben Vincent, Jaime Medrano, and Al Lowe. It is no mean feat to keep such a large group on task and on track, and not full of spam. And so to do so, it takes a lot of, uh, well, few good hands and eyeballs on the situation. So if you want to become a part of that, or possibly part of their moderation or administration staff, best way to do that is go find them over on Facebook. Again, the Facebook group, Remember in El Paso When?, the group Remember in El Paso When. But again, joining us here in studio again for the second hour of the program, we do have uh, Holly Cobb, Executive Director, and Adara Margo, founder of the Tom Lee Institute. Thank you both very much for sticking around with us here today. Well, it's great to be here, and we're very excited about the fact that we are building community and a love for this region mm. through our events and through our mobile tour. That's really what it's all about. And so we've introduced so many students as well as just sure. visitors to the richness of this region. And, you know, people who say, oh, there's nothing to do in El Paso. Well, there's a lot to yeah. do in El Paso. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And, and it's it's um, very meaningful events that contribute to people's lives. And that's how we've structured all the events for Tom Lee Celebration in the app, too. It is a phrase I've been familiar with over the years. There's no boring places, only boring people. But I can understand, like, okay, there's not enough things laid out for me to do. And in this case, they would be very wrong, at the very least, right. in this microcosm of events. That, again, for the Tom Lee celebration, the focus that we're having this year with the Tom Lee Trail, particularly, again, on the Texas sections of it, there is a whole amount of it that goes uh, across state lines and even internationally. But, again, the focus this year primarily on the Texas sections of it, of course, here in El Paso and other points primarily east of here and the rest mm -hmm. of Texas. And so there are a lot of events that are going on here through this, and people can, of course, find that download or just all of the details and all the information over on y'all's website, uh, TomLee.com. That's 
T O M L E A dot com. So we've been talking about some of the events that have been happening either immediately here or in some further reaches of the state. Honestly, those one you're mentioning, like in uh, Seymour and uh, Hebronville down there in uh, southern reaches of Texas. But a couple more that we're going to want to be talking about here will certainly be about at least a couple of uh, fellows presentations, right? That's right. Yeah, we have, uh, in addition to two t- Tom Lee fellow professors, we also have two Tom Lee fellow students. Both of them happen to be graduate students in right. this case. And they're doing some very interesting projects and presentations, and they'll be held at the Rubin Center and mm-hmm. will be you know, a joint event but with the two fellows. And one of them is Zazul uh, is going to be um, doing a very interesting presentation, which is a, a, an audio interpretation of, of characters in Tom Lee's writings. And so uh, okay. it's... I. I'm not sure what it's going to be like, but I think it's going to be <laughs> fascinating, and and uh, she's very creative about it. And then uh, another uh, of our fellows is uh, taking research and correspondence from the National Archives. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Tom Lee did a lot of correspondence with the National Archives because they oversaw the WPA project, right. and so they um, he and and so he's taking the correspondence of uh, you know with. Tom and trying to convince them as to why a particular mural should be done or maybe what the theme of a particular mural is. And it's very fascinating, and he's going to be focusing on that. And again, this is all primary research that hasn't been explored before. So, and I actually want to take a step back here for a second. We've mentioned WPA a few times here as is kind of a given because it's one of those features of particularly, you know, that era of, you know, large public artwork. But for those that aren't familiar with it, when it comes to WPA, I mean, it can be easily kind of rolled into the New Deal plethora of three-letter agencies that existed. But particularly when it came to that one, what did it stand for and what was kind of, you know, the, the important information behind it and how it came about? Well, the, you know, the New Deal, and it's great being on the border. I mean, it was inspired by Mexico, the great sure. Mexican muralist. I mean, how their government buildings, you know, were filled with images that communicated uh, their history. And so the concept really it was inspired. But it was under Roosevelt mm. during the Depression uh, that he decided that artists should be included. Uh, we d- There was a lot of architecture, a lot of art for buildings. And it's a favorite period of American art for many people because it talks about region, right? which at this Tom Lee was definitely a regionalist. So were the Florentines <laughs> and people in, in, in Italy. But it's, it, it's each piece of Tom Lee's for a region has to do uh, with, with that region. But Tom Lee, having been trained as a muralist, which was unusual at the time, he mm-hmm. had gone to Chicago he had worked for a man named John Warner Norton, who did many murals mm. on on canvas for these skyscrapers that okay. were going yeah. up Holabird and Root. It was a great period of architecture, but you would paint your mural not on a wall after a building was built. Right. You had to have it ready to go up like wallpaper. So they they okay. it, it, Tom did all of his work on canvas. Uh, so that's why. It, pe- pieces can be moved the the piece yeah, we did okay. our our library when they remodeled the library they moved it to another location that is interesting i didn't so, i just thought it was a, just a laborious and conservation project to get it moved but he he trained he he trained he was trained as a as a, a muralist uh when many artists were easel painters and then just blew their pictures up you know to yeah. p- to participate in the, in that period so uh as I said, he and the interesting thing about Tom Lee, too, his f- first mural during the New Deal, it was done for the Ben Franklin Post Office on Pennsylvania mm-hmm. Avenue in Washington, D.C., just a few blocks from the White House. And when he did that mural, which is a fraction, it's two figures. Our mural mm. down the Pass of the North mural is, I think, eleven, not, eleven, 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 11? figures. Okay. But he got glorious reviews in the L.A. Times, national press, saying it was a new period in public art, that it was so noble. It was so non-pretentious. Right. Comparing him to other better-known artists uh, of that period. Uh, But when he came out here, it's so interesting, our Pass of the North mural, it got no national press. 
Really? Lots of local press, but sure. of course there were no reporters out here. Uh, okay. In so 1938. The location, the idea behind it. So but yeah. lots of local press. So it's it's Certainly. not a bad position to be in that you have this treasure that no one learned about till now. Fair enough here. So, yeah, the Works Proge- Progress Administration and the way that a lot of the kind of inspirational work came along with it. And the way I kind of think about it anyway is maybe not directly, but at least in part like a response to some of the concepts of just utilitarianism and almost brutalism. If you want to go to the architectural route of saying of a, you know, function only when it also comes to the expressing the ideals and, you know, and also taking, you know, like you said, the pretension out of necessarily art and presentation of it. And that's a lot of the way his work ended up being was towards the idea of for everyone and for all circumstances and for people in those locations and anyone coming to visit it here. So there's, again, a couple of things that you all have going on when it comes to those uh, reviews of them here. So again, um, the Tom Lee Fellows are going to be talking about those among other things. And so again, some of those presentations going on again, uh, primarily happening at the Rubin Center, right? Right. Yeah, it's it's going to be another uh, multifaceted event and people are going to really learn a lot about something that's very interesting, but not something that most people think about. And so uh, we're, you know, both kind of an audio presentation, as I described, and then something that's really going to be looking at Tom's correspondence. He was he was a mm-hmm. prolific correspondent, and right. he uh, wrote beautifully, no matter what. He had this gorgeous uh, calligraphy handwriting mm. that uh, is in and of itself a work of art. And so we, uh, you know, we're excited about this particular event, and we're going to be also... Um, we have a number of events in other areas, in other cities. Sure. Uh, anybody in Dallas, we have actually two different events going oh, on there. Okay. Adair mentioned at the Bush Library, uh, we're going to mm. be, uh, Adair will be talking about the Rio Grande in the Oval Office, and they'll be having sure. a, a wonderful reception, open house. And then we also have the Hall of State, uh, where we'll have um, actually a, a young a champion roper who will be performing oh. there. He's from El Paso. Oh, His okay. name is Omar Castro, and then we'll be ha- talking about those two murals that are there in Dallas. For y- If you have uh, relatives or friends in Dallas, this is definitely an event to put on your calendar. For sure. Tom Lee did the West Texas room for the Hall of State. They had oh, okay. different rooms to represent different parts of Texas. So mm-hmm. he did the West Texas room, inclu- including that cowboy with a lasso. So mm-hmm. we're going to bring it to life with mm-hmm. Omar Castro. Mm-hmm. Performing it where? Yeah. Excellent. And then so one of the other fellows presentations also specifically uh, going to be involving or actually another one of those is going to be a, a, a review of uh, that lintel that you were mentioning right. that's there at the, was at the International right. Museum. Yes. Uh, there, Tom actually did two lentils in El Paso. One right. is at the Centennial Museum and then the other one is at the International Museum. And that will be a wonderful event where we'll be having, again, the director of Isleta del Sur Pueblo talking about Native American headdresses, and not all Native Americans wore headdresses, no. and mm. not all of them looked the same. And so he's going to be talking about that, and then they're going to be bringing their dancers to perform different types of dances for uh, our guests, and then also, of course, we'll have a another repast uh, that people can enjoy and and uh, build relationships and visit and so forth. So the International Museum of Art, that that particular lentil mm. was uh, built, you know, and designed for the education wing, which the doors to it are now closed. So not many people notice oh, this particular okay. lentil, but it's wonderful because Tom was uh, once again depicting the diversity of the heritage of this region like he did in the Pass of the North Mural. That was a common theme for him. He, he was unusual mm. for his time because he recognized the diversity and appreciated it, whereas a lot of people were pretty, um, you know, colorblind or focused on their own nationality, and Tom was not that way at all. He, he lived in El Paso. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or yeah, maybe other people being dismissive of, well, they were here before, but we are here now, and those kind of things, and so mm-hmm. uh, so showing some of those scenes from the past in the north, but then that specific one, the work itself, at the very least, entitled, if not you know, only because it's present immediately on the work, mm-hmm. their self, uh, Pasaron Por Aquí, and it shows specifically three different of the, I guess, major groups, could be right. argued, that have been through this area, both we're talking about the Native American headdress kind of 
now we don't want to refer to it as stereotypical, but an immediately very recognizable of, you know, the kind of like, you know, some of the Great Plains Indians, the headdresses and the very, you know, kind of long feathered ones here. But then we have a, a conquistador helmet and then we have, a, you know, Western style cowboy hat here representing some of the three major groups that have been present yeah. and significantly and contributing founding. to it. You know, yeah. the early, you know, the indigenous people were here and then the Certainly. Spaniards came through. And of course, it's been added well, like China last year. Last year, but oh sure, we generally say like the founding, sort of the founding culture that we're here. Okay. People may not know what a lentil is. Basically, that would be my next question. We do yeah. have a video on our Tom Lee um, Trail tour, mobile tour, about how a lentil is made. But basically, it's engraved in stone, mm. and uh, it's uh, not not exactly a monument. It's more two dimensional kind of. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. it can be engraved, and again, you can kind of see some of the dimensionality here, if only because of the good lighting there. But it basically, I mean, we're talking about this being both this one and the one of the Centennial Museum placed above doorways, right? Right. right. Mm -hmm. This is sort of an abbreviation. Of course, if you go to the Pass of the North Mural, of course, the Mexican plays such a prominent role there. Oh, sure. And But um, it, anyway, it's uh, it's 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 all related. I guess there's also an argument. an abbreviated version. Sure, and I, I guess there's an argument to be made that uh, even the past, the North Mural, uh, has a lintel component to it as yeah, well. But that's more true. of an inscription to its own point. But right. just to give kind of an idea of it, the part that's immediately above a doorway and often the, the supporting right. part of it, yeah. that would be the part we're talking about. Right. That's a very good insight, Andrew. You're right. That is sort of modeled after what a, uh, the function of a lintel. Right? Yeah. So again, not exactly an apples to apples comparison here because, mm -hmm. of, among other things, uh, the past of the north part, the lintel part of it is an inscription as opposed to its own piece of artwork. But we'll talk more about that in the other events coming up mm -hmm. here again. Uh, that's Holly Cobb, executive director, also with here as, us in studio, of course, is Adair Margo, founder, both with the Tom Lee Institute. A lot more coming up about the Tom Lee celebration and the Tom Lee Trail focus that it has this year. But taking that next break right now, stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show after this here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. 
and at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. You can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's mission trail, plus the Guadalupe mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Of course, we have a lot of guests coming up for you in coming weeks on the show. We are looking at some out-of-office time coming up uh, probably towards the end of the month here. We'll have more details before too long, but more specifically, we'll have all of that posted over on our social media. Again, find us Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch, either under El Paso History, El Paso History TV, El Paso History Radio Show, or Andrew J. Polk, depending on which platform and page that you're looking at. But expecting to talk more about the OLLI, or the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, over at UTEP and the work that they do, and specifically some of their history tours in those up coming episodes along with many other subjects that we're looking to explore with you all but again joining us here in studio for this program we do have again Adair Margo founder and Holly Cobb executive director both with the Tom Lee Institute again all the details on what they got going on this year for Tom Lee celebration tomlee.com but one finer point that we kind of talked a little bit about earlier but I wanted to focus more on for at least this short segment here was about the portraiture because there's an argument to be made that I mean, as much as landscapes are a significant port and, you know, in murals and all of that, that there was always a, a human element, if only in the, I mean, certainly the purpose of it, but also, of course, in the who was present in it, because there was often figures integrated in some way, but also then his direct portrait work, even if a bit, I may, maybe not. Uh, what people would be immediately thinking of as traditional portraiture was I mean, a lot of emotional focus, particularly in one that always comes to mind for me, that of the 2,000-yard the stairs we were also talking about earlier, his work when it came to, again, the, you know, the, particularly the Pacific Theater in that case, but World War II in general. And, I mean, this is very obviously a portrait, even if I would almost argue the emotional content of it is the, the key component of it. Right. He saw this man, you know, he, mm -hmm. he wrote about uh, being on Peleliu and seeing this Marine, mm. um, you know, it's like, how much can you take? Yeah. And it has become a symbol for PTSD. We've had, uh, yeah. we've had requests uh, to use mm -hmm. this image quite a bit and mm -hmm. uh, had people speak uh, about this portrait. Um, he, Tom always said he didn't think it took, of course, this was a very special kind of, uh, the toll of war. Yeah. Uh, but he also, he said he didn't think it took much to mess up a human head uh, the way Picasso did in oh, a lot sure. of his work. Mm -hmm. uh, he said he, he thought he took kind of a superior uh, kind of sense of humor. You know, look what I can do. Uh, but he said to look at a head and to see what's going on behind the eyes mm -hmm. and how the way that head is held on its shoulders and but what's going on behind those eyes? He says that's the work of a real portrait artist. And he, it's, he generally, World War II was an exception, but he chose his subjects during World War II. He wasn't hired to paint uh, admirals or to paint, you know, he chose, sure. his, he chose his subjects. And after the war, he reserved portraiture for himself. He usually did portraits of people uh, he made a few exceptions. He did one for Sam Rayburn. It's in the Rayburn oh, Building sure. in mm -hmm. Washington, D.C. He also did one uh, commissioned by the Pan American Roundtable after Harry Truman mm -hmm. had visited mm -hmm. Mexico City. They sent him a portrait of Benito Juarez. A mm -hmm. reproduction of that hangs in our offices. But uh, many of his portraits were of, of people, uh, you know, he knew except for during the war, you know, uh, and sure. those th those portraits during the war, I mean, Jimmy Doolittle, he didn't do it from photographs. They sat for him. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't do it uh, with the exception of people who are deceased uh, unless someone could uh, sit for him. And so Claire Chenault, Jimmy Doolittle, mm -hmm. Madam and Gen Generalissimo, uh, Chiang Kai-shek, all right. of those portraits are extraordinary. But again, particularly on the aspect of who he knew, and I would almost argue that this one uh, particularly uh, is almost 
portraiture via landscape. I, I don't know if that's the right way to put it here, but it's almost a landscape approach to the entire figure. Because, I mean, obviously this is of the human figure, but it's almost, I mean, and then the landscape integrated, of course, literally behind it. But of the entire span of a person, it just kind of, I don't know. That That's the way I think about this one particularly. He, he carried a, a, a photograph of his wife throughout the war, standing in the backyard of their home. Mm-hmm. And when he got back, after he finished the port- the paintings of war, he had Sarah pose for him and mm. did that portrait, he said, as a votive, as an artist's votive, uh, like lay- lighting a votive candle and the gratefulness of being home. Oh, that it was makes like sense. a votive offering. And so it doesn't have our desert. He had to put her in a verdant. I mean, it's green. Sure. It's a, I think it's based on a, a, a landscape down in uh, Mexico somewhere that was greener than our uh, than our our landscape, but oh, yeah, I could argue it was, was a, and that hung in their house. He never let it out. Yeah. He let me show it one time, and I think when they named the Tomley Gallery, he allowed it to be shown there. So yeah, the artwork we're talking about there, Sarah in the summertime. I would argue that it could just be a really well watered lawn in our yeah. area. Yeah. I don't know here, but I mean, again, the, the way you're talking about that is votive because it's a very it's a very tall artwork, right. far more tall than it is wide by any means so i think most people have you know when it comes to portraiture the idea of you can kind of you know not quite you know five by seven or the kind of but closer to that dimension you know respect that regard that ratio and this one is way taller than it is that well that's her he did it what uh, the size that she actually was. five foot six yeah oh it is and, actually and her so in, in heels yeah yeah every i mean everything was you know exactly replicated her her dimensions and the flowers on the dress, which I don't know if you can see, but they're mm. teeny tiny flowers on the oh, dress. Yeah. And mm. It took him a very long time just to paint those. But when we did an event down in, in Austin with the uh, Veteran Suicide Channel Network, mm. um, they said that one of the therapies that they offer their, their vets is basically doing that kind of repetitive painting oh, like okay. that because it, it calms the mind and Tom did that right after he came back from World War II mm. and it basically he didn't realize it but it was art therapy um, without him because he, he said he wanted to get the war out of his head and he wanted to focus on something that he really loved of course that was Sarah of course there it's, it's, it's so often in art history you, you, so much of the art world after World War II it was about not representing the world because the world was so terrible or sure. you know whatever the narrative that goes with that but Tom appreciated where he came from all the more and the people he loved most because the contrast was so great after landing between the first and second wave on Pelolo and what he what he what he witnessed uh he was all the more appreciative of home. Absolutely. So, again, that's Adara Margo, founder, and again, also with us in studio, Holly Cobb, executive director, both with the Tom Lee Institute. Again, talking about the Tom Lee celebration for this year. Again, all the focus on, again, the Tom Lee Trail and the many events that we'll continue talking about here after we take this next break. So, stay tuned for more on that after this here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 
and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA-TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Of course, we do have some of our other great, well, helping us promote the different aspects of El Paso history and aspects of our region as a whole, including, of course, El Paso, Inc., El Paso's Business Journal, of course, with unique and in-depth reporting coming out each and every week. To get El Paso's Business Journal, it is available for home or business delivery. Order it online at elpasoinc.com. I get the digital subscription myself in order to be able to stay abreast on the major and important and impacting stories they have every week. And, of course, you can see our promo announcements about the upcoming editions that we have coming for you each week on the El Paso History Radio show primarily in the b section so be sure to support them as they support us in our mission of el paso history el paso inc that's again el paso inc el paso inc dot com but again joining us here in studio right now we do have adair margo founder and holly cobb executive director with the tomley institute talking this as week as we are we're going to be talking about for some coming weeks as it is going to be happening on through april of next year with the tomley celebration focused this year on the Tom Lee trail particularly the texas portions of it, though the trail itself overall does extend throughout the whole region in both north, south, east, west, both across state and international boundaries here. But and kind of to exemplify that and highlight that uh, some of the events going on similar to what happened uh, last year, we talked about one about the uh, I Love El Paso. And this one is a very specific and interesting focus you have with the guests that are going to be hosting that one this year, right? Yes, it'll be at the uh, council consulate in El Paso and Consul Ibarra and his wife Kathy will be our special guests talking about um, giving us insight into marriage and family and how mm -hmm. you balance all that and be an important individual uh, in international affairs as Consul Ibarra is. Yeah, it delights me to have them speaking. Uh, when I served President Bush and of course I chaired the President's Committee on the Arts and the Humanities, and we focused on, oh, sure. me we, on Mexico, and then it extended to other countries. But we started with Mexico, and Cons Consul uh, General Ibarra was there at the embassy at the time. Mm, so okay. I've known him a long, long time. He's a delightful uh, man, and his wife is. Uh, they're wonderful people. But also, we have to remember the Tomley Trail does extend. You cannot. It does. This is why El Paso... Uh, when I served on the coordinating board for higher ed, it's like, I don't recognize us. It's like all of a sudden, you know, Texas stops and it's like shows a dropout rate. And I'm going, well, are people going to New Mexico State? Are they going to Wasejota? Or, you know, it just you don't get a whole picture of El Paso when you stop at Texas. So ultimately, but just just the practicality of working with the Texas Historical Commission. Oh, sure. You focus on Texas, so that cuts us off. But we will be extending the trail. We, our head of, of uh, 
of uh, visit El Paso. He's from New Mexico. He says, oh, I know the person in Mm -hmm. charge up in New Mexico. So we will be extending it up to New Mexico where there are earlier Earlier New Deal murals are oh, up at sure. New Mexico State and at the Brannigan Library in Las Cruces. And then Chihuahua, uh, we, we, we got the trail named through a, a, a memorial in New Mexico. Chihuahua is a proclamation. But there, there's no art, although we hope there'll be art, but his themes are there. So like the mission in Juarez will, yeah, have, sure. will have signage with, you know, his, his images of his art uh, and get to see the 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 inspiration for it absolutely so i mean the span of the trail is everywhere again either documented evidenced or traveled through or by particularly again within and beyond our region here but again the specific event what it's going to be the uh, i love el paso so talking about kind of living raising being being a part of this region and particularly i mean a part of the governance of this region from their perspective right as again the you know consul ibada and his wife is you know kind of that right. couple and their their experiences right they're they're um these interviews are, are unique in that we and we get into, you know, the dynamics of their marriage and how do you make it work uh, under extreme pressure and raising children. Uh, not It's not just about their careers, but it's really about sure. uh, so gives people insight into something that they really need to have insight into. It's very helpful, and people always enjoy it. Last year, we did Heather Wilson and Jay right. Hone. And People loved the interview, and they, you know, were just absolutely fascinating and very funny. Wasn't able to attend that one myself, but some of the you kind of talk about it, and of course, what I saw you all posting online here is that it's kind of, I don't know, for lack of a better term, intimate in a group setting. I don't yes, know because right. you're getting you're getting really down to the you know the details of someone's life and, and their thoughts on living and being and and on our region. Right. Yeah. And you and you get surprising insights into these well known people that you would not have had otherwise. And so, and they are amazingly candid. And uh, Dee and Adair Margo uh, were one of our previous of uh, I Love El Paso couples. They did a, a great job. Dee was really the star. He he did a wonderful job on that particular interview, too. So. So. Holly's, Holly's a master at it. You know, she had a television <laughs> program where she did it. She's a pastor's wife. So, mm-hmm. you know, she's just, she's able to do that in a way that people really come away with you know how to how to it was, it's kind of like you said Tom Lee's art you learn about being a better person and you learn about having an awareness that you might be mm-hmm. lacking and so it's it, they're always very enriching and all of these people who we've had in the past and uh, the Abadas they're all fans of Tom Lee and many of them actually o- own Tom Lee originals as well oh so, yeah. okay excellent so when is that one going to be coming up in the span of this whole celebration um, that that will be. February. It's always yeah. around Valentine's. February eighth. Yeah. Oh yeah, kind of around you know Valentine's Day, yes. around that theme of yeah. love and I love El Paso. Right. Yeah, and we we try to make it so people can make it a, a friend date or um, a, a couples date if they would like to. Ah. So make take that pressure off of people to come up with something for Valentine's Day. This is the perfect solution. Excellent. And so, again, this is the, again, the beyond the Tom Lee month, as people may recall here, this is well in as we've been doing it for at least a couple of years now, the Tom Lee celebration. So there's going to be a whole span of events, and there's at least a couple others that you wanted to mention about other events that are also going to be coming up in this span, right? Right, yeah. Another event is a tour of the Tom Lee Gallery. Mm. Most people don't realize that the El Paso Museum of Art actually has a Tom Lee Gallery. It's yeah. named after it, but it's way up at the top of the very high uh, walls, so you, pe- most people miss it. But maybe, Adair, you can tell them about the founding of the Tom Lee Gallery. Right, that was, uh, that was uh, in, in when the museum, new museum opened in 97. Laura Bush was no. First Lady mm-hmm. of Texas. We had, uh, she came out for it. We raised money, really, to bring Tom Lee's work home because most of his, he never had a dealer. So he always oh, sold okay. his paintings out of his own studio. And uh, and so they ended up in Dallas. Robert Deckard, uh, head of the Velo Corporation, his his grandfather was Ewing Thomason, mm. who was from El Paso, mayorly. He was a, a civil rights, you know, was a leader in civil rights and influenced LBJ. But he, they ended up with uh, Rio Grande, and that painting came to us when we mm. were uh, were 
conducting this uh, this campaign for Tom Lee Gallery, Mary Lewis Clayburg from the King Ranch gave all of his illustrations mm. from the Hands of Cantu, a book about the coming of the horse. It was published uh, right when Duotone Printing came out. Hmm. And so his publisher, Little Brown, did all of his books, said, you can do whatever you want. So all these glorious illustrations are done in Chinese ink and these gradations of tone rather than just black and white sure. illustrations. So all kinds of treasures came uh, to the El Paso Museum of Art. There are over 100 pieces. Uh, but the one that came from Robert Deckard in Dallas Laura Bush was coming out. Uh, actually, she came for Tom's funeral. He died soon after her husband became president, mm -hmm. and her husband wanted a Tom Lee. And it was that painting, Rio Grande, mm -hmm. that was, you know, just a few years later, less than three years later, went to Washington, D.C., where it hung in the Oval Office of the White House right. for eight years. And the president always quoted uh, Tom Lee about living on the sunrise side of the mountain. Mm. Another painting is, was in the LBJ West Wing. It right. wasn't in the Oval Office. but So both presidents from Texas, one a Democrat, one a Republican, both had Tom Lees. And uh, John Conley, that's another mm -hmm. event, will be at Austin. Uh, C.R. Smith, who was the president of American Airlines, commissioned a painting for his mm. uh, his friend, John Conley, uh, the governor of Texas, C.R. Smith, was the founder of American Airlines. Mm, mm. And it's a Tom Lee that now hangs in the governor's business office. It's hung in several governor's offices, including Bush and, and, and Governor Clements. But that'll be another event in yeah. Austin. We haven't set the date yet. Ah, but. okay. Mm -hmm. And that, that's all on the Tom Lee mobile tour site, too, all of that information. Absolutely. And, and the background and history. It's the... Uh, you know, again, the Rio Grande is just, um, uh, you know, an incredible story uh, and really highlights uh, the beauty of this region because instead of there being people in that particular uh, painting, you know, the, the person who's looking at the painting is becomes part of the painting as the observer of our beautiful landscape. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Paso Museum of Art has over 130 original mm, Tom Lee's okay. at any given time they may they will have usually three on display and they have kind of a Tom Lee corner that they've developed so that uh, they can feature Tom Lee a little bit more so than some of the other artists hmm, and okay. so um, so people realize uh, that this is somebody who's special and they have some interpretive information there but there are also uh, Tom Lee's sketchbook from World War two which mm. again spearheaded the the movement to purchase that sketchbook for the El Paso. Aboard the USS Hornet. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, which was sunk. So it's like one of the fine, uh, uh, the, all Tom Lee's work are the only visual record right. of, the, of the Hornet's final months. Hmm. Uh, so what we have is very, very significant. And Tom, there was a man who used to own a, a station here. Uh, he was from Mississippi and he wanted to buy that, and Tom just couldn't bring himself to sell it to someone he didn't know. He said, it, it's like selling your soul. Mm -hmm. So Jamie Clement from the King Ranch and I raised money uh, to buy that uh, because Tom was never a wealthy man, and it was approaching the end of his life. So we bought that uh, sketchbook. It's in the collection of the, of the Museum of Art. So we have we have we have treasures there and yeah. a treasure in, a treasure in Tom Lee mm -hmm. who's influenced so many. I can't tell you Luis Jimenez. I mean, mm. uh, what people would stand in front of that Pass of the North mural, the giants of our history. You know, Luis Jimenez's Vaquero. I mean, there's a there's a Chato and Tom Lee's. I mean, it's inspiration to see uh, our own culture and our own history uh, represented by artists. Absolutely. And the Tom Lee Gallery is so named, it's not all about Tom Lee. Right. It's about mm. the regional artists that we have. Uh, and Tom was influential and was friends with many of them, like Verbici Soler, who did Mount Cristo Ray. Right. And uh, so. Jose so, Cisneros, yeah, Aceves. Right. Yeah, yeah, sure. Right. And so, so the the purpose of the Tom Lee Gallery tour is not only to look at Tom Lee, but his sure. influence on. Uh, the artists of this particular region, and we have, yeah. we're we're very lucky. We have a yeah. lot of 
great artists then and now. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's not a lack of artistic talent in this area, but it's about talking about it and making sure people know about it. That is the key component of it here. So, again, that's Holly Cobb, Executive Director, also with us here in studio, Adair Margo, founder of the Tom Lee Institute. Again, all the details going on for the Tom Lee celebration. Again, well expanded past uh, just the month as it has been in recent years. Uh, Going to be focusing on the Tom Lee Trail and the Tom Lee Trail app that is available over on their website for download, or at least the download link is up there. We'll also have that QR code available for it as well as the download link on our social media. But got to take that next break right now. Coming back, closing out the show, and talking a little bit more about this and, again, how you all can participate after this break. So stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. Thank you all so very much for having joined us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host and have been your host, Andrew J. Polk. Of course, a lot of things that are still going on, including later this month, there will be the 2023 Border Archives Bazaar with the Border Regional Archives Group focused on the uh, recollections or recollecciones and the archives there. Find out all those details are going to be happening at the New Mexico Farm and Ranch Heritage Museum in Las Cruces. But again, joining us here in studio has been again Adair Margo founder and Holly Cobb executive director with the Tom Lee Institute talking all about all the things going on this year for again the Tom Lee celebration focused this year on the Tom Lee trail both in terms of the features of it particularly on the Texas segments of it here but also on the app and the online experience that people can have anywhere coming with it so 
there's a lot of encapsulation we've tried to do over this couple hours, and we always fall just a little bit short because there's only so much you can get into even in a couple hours of programming. So kind of just to wrap up here, what do you all want people to know about, you know, the way you all are structuring it, the way it'll happen, and, and how people can particularly participate and experience it this year? May I mention one thing that we failed to, to oh, mention? Sure. The Museum of the Big Bend has ah. recently opened a whole wing with Tom Lee's History of Beef Cattle. Oh, uh, at, okay. It's not on our map yet because our designer hasn't gotten around to put it, putting it on the map. But that is thir- those are 13 paintings done directly after World War II. Ah, okay. that you can, so that's part of our season this year. It's we want you to get out, sure. go to the Museum of the Big Ben, go see those paintings, learn about them, uh, travel the state, and also discover what's in your own community. Yeah, so it's still growing and developing when it comes to the trail right. itself. Yeah, no, it, it, it definitely They will got those paintings they, so they could be on the trail. Right, yeah. They, huh? they came from the basement of the Dallas Museum of Art. Oh, jeez. So. Okay. Life Magazine had left it to Dallas because that was where, that was a museum where they could leave the paintings. Uh, so sure. they, could okay. care, they could care for the paintings. But, you know, Dallas wasn't really the most appropriate. They've been very generous about open getting them out and hanging them temporarily during Tom Lee Month. But they belong, like, in the Big Bend. And that's his landscape, too. Sure. So uh, we're excited about that. So y- you can really participate in Tom Lee Celebration in, in at least a couple of ways. And sure. one is, is through the app itself. Or Certainly. The t- t- Tom Lee Trail Mobile Tour as we call it, and uh, that that's something you can just uh, read. Uh, a lot of people say, well, you know, I'm sitting and waiting for something, the doctor's office, to pick up my kids <laughs> sure. from school, and I just uh, look at that and read it and enjoy it, and it's uh, very multimedia in its orientation, so it's very entertaining as well. And then also uh, through our uh, events that we have throughout mm. Texas and uh, any event that you go to is going to be a great event. So um, we want to encourage people to come out for that. And on our on our website, mm. uh, and you'll see that we have a way to sign up for the event, to ah, register okay. for the event, because our events get full. We have sure. lots and lots of people who come, and we don't want them to be major, huge events. These are not uh, like a rock concert or something. They're events that have, you know, 60, 80, 100 people, and we keep it that way so that it's intimate and personal and you get to know the speaker and other people who attend and enjoy yourself. So uh, we encourage people to register for the events uh, sure. that they're interested in, and you can do that uh, on our Tom Lee website. Absolutely, because yeah. even as we're recording some of this, some things kind of uh, to be to be decided, to be fully announced here, because in the span of it, as we're doing this in uh, early September, span of these events goes all the way through next April. Right. So there's a lot still to come. And even again, like you said, still being developed, as a matter of fact, here when it comes to the trail and other things. So a lot of activity surrounding this, certainly. I want to mention one thing, because we have had people, like the the doctor who posed for the hands in the first recorded surgical operation. Oh, sure. He's from like Sweetwater, and there's a farm out there that has those drawings so i think with time we'll probably wow. be expanding the trail to see other details mm-hmm. of things right. absolutely so that's just kind of a sneak preview of that for maybe future uh, months or a years but again everything going on for the tom lee uh both celebration and trail this year again at tom lee.com that's t-o-m-l-e-a.com where you can find all the details on everything coming up, and as more details mm-hmm. come out, will also be available over there, including, again, the download for the app and, again, everything going on with it this year. So we are out of time here for this program, but I do want to, thank, again, thank our guests, again, Adair Margo, founder, and Holly Cobb, executive director with the Tom Lee Institute. Thank you both very much for being with us here today to talk about what is going on, what are the features, and all the ways people can interact with it for, again, the Tom Lee Celebration and the Tom Lee Trail here today. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you very much. And thank you all very much for having joined us here for the El Paso History Radio Show. I've been your host, Andrew J. Polk. We have a lot more coming up for you in future weeks on the show here. And again, with the events going on, and we'll keep you all abreast of it as best we can on here and on the upcoming things for the Tom Lee celebration. But thank you all very much for having joined us here. We'll be back with you next week with more talk about what's going on and the history in and around El Paso. Have a great weekend, y'all.